welcome guys in this video we'll be talking about about proteomes right about proteome okay so what is proteome that's our actual question proteome is uh, nothing but the total protein content of a cell at a particular time in a particular environmental conditions so may, many things are there right so it's simply so let me simplify this process it's simply total protein content total protein content of a cell but provided the facts at a given time or a particular time and obviously and a particular environmental condition right so it depends on two important things so let us talk about it further that let let me let me talk about it say this is a cell of our choice now inside the cell there are many proteins at present at a particular time right because proteins are literally everywhere and what is uh, we are seeing actually all all uh, most of uh, of it is made up with protein right so inside a cell at a particular time there are many proteins many proteins right many proteins are present now proteins are present in cell membrane they are embedded in cell membrane they are present in cytoplasm in all around cytoplasm because they are uh, providing the crucial functionality inside the cell so what proteins are doing this proteins proteins help and all the proteins that are present inside our body they are specialized right some protein are doing some important functions like the membrane embedded proteins are uh, important for the transferring of components uh, out and in of the membrane and obviously the proteins that are present inside like uh, the dna polymerase rna polymerase they are helping in the dna uh, replication transcription and translation and all these things right so proteins even required for the production of other proteins so proteins are actually everything that we can imagine for a cell right so so not a single protein can uh, do all the job inside the cell so instead we require many proteins so le let me talk about it let's say let's say here let's say this this is a protein so say protein 1 say another protein let's say this one is a protein 2 so all of the protein is having their own functionality so it's protein 2 and let's say this is a protein 3 so protein 3 is having its own functionality and let's say this is the protein 4 which is the degradative protein which help in the degradation action and all these things so this is a protein 4 so let's take another protein say this one protein 5 so suppose among them some proteins are helping in transport some proteins are helping in the transcription some proteins are helping in uh, establishing a particular task like uh, movement of protein from one place to another place so everything is controlled by proteins inside so let's say here inside this cell there are these five different proteins present at a particular time at a particular environmental condition say the condition is 27 degrees Celsius temperature and obviously optimum moisture and all this condition this cells possess all this protein inside now if we know how the proteins look like that means what are their structure because remember structure for proteins are really important remember structures are very important for proteins because structures are telling us always that what are the function of the protein right so this is a very important relationship of uh, in case of protein because structure of protein will tell us the function of that protein so now if we understand all the structure of the protein if we identify all these five different proteins in this case and we know the structure of the protein then from knowing it we know we will be knowing the function of the protein right so by knowing the structure we can get the function of the protein now suppose we know we take uh, we, we uh, break the cell we take out all the proteins we isolate the proteins we identify the proteins and we get the structure of the proteins pretty fair right now from the structure we also know how they are functioning so we know how uh, what is the function of protein p1 we know the function of protein p4 p, p2 p3 p5 everything we know all of their functions right but this is not enough the knowing the function will not tell us how the cell functions is it now if we know that this p1 protein helps in the dna replication so it will only help us to know that yes p1 protein is involved in the dna replication but it won't tell us that what are the uh, how this whole process of dna replication is going on right 
To understand the all cellular machineries at once, what we need to know, we need to have a profound understanding of all the protein functions and not only their individual functions, but also we need to learn how these proteins are interacting with each other. That's very, very important. This is probably the most important part, the interaction of these proteins. Now, how this P1 is interacting with P3, uh, whether any kind of interaction is present between P1 or P4 or not. Say in this case, P1 is not interacting with protein. I'm uh, denoting with this is dotted line. That means P1 is not interacting with P P4. But say uh, P1 is interacting with P3. Or sometimes say P1 is interacting with P2. P4 inter is interacting with P5. P5 is interacting with P2. So there are a lot of interactions. Like, for example, say P1 directly can interact with P5. So this kind of interactions can be there. So they are. So if we connect all these dots, uh, for the functionality of all these proteins together, what we are getting, we are getting literally a map, right? So this is called a protein map. This is very, very important. Once after understanding the function of individual proteins, if we can make this protein map, then we probably understand the function of cell, right? So this is the actual answer. So to answer this question, how cell functions, we need to take all the proteins out of the cell. We need to look for their functions individually. Then what we need to have, we need to look for the functions whether the proteins are interacting with each other or not. And this process is called a protein, protein interaction. It is called a protein protein interaction. This is a very, very con new concept and this is a very in interesting concept. So this is a kind of interaction right so I can't see here anyways so this is a protein protein interaction which is playing the important role these are the interactions right so we need to find this pathways of protein interaction for example say in this case p1 is acting as a helper protein for p3 so p1 uh, enhances the activity of p3 for example in this case it enhances the activity for example say p2 is blocking or inhibiting the activity so let's say here p P2 is active, inhibiting the activity of P5. So what we can see here, it inhibits the activity. So this can also happen. Two proteins can function synergistically. They can function antagonistically. So these are the different type of interactions that we want to understand. Now if you know this kind of interaction, it will help us to understand how the cell actually functions. So that's why we are studying what is called a proteome because proteome means all the set of proteins at a particular time at a particular environmental conditions and not only that but also their interaction and how all the proteins inside the cell are interacting together to give us a properly fully functional cell right so that is about the proteomes and i hope this video helps you to understand thank you